Today, Mike Johnson will be sworn in as Denver's new mayor. Nine News reporter Brianna Fernandez is live at the Ellie Calkins Opera House at the Denver Performing Arts Center. And Brianna, that's where in just a few hours Johnson will give his inauguration speech. Hey, yeah, good morning to both of you. So Mike Johnson, he will go from mayor elect to mayor for the city of Denver and Denver hasn't had a new mayor in 12 years. So this is the beginning of an era right here for the Mile High City. We know Mike Johnston, he will serve as the city's 46th mayor and he takes the reins from Mayor Michael Hancock, who served as Denver's mayor for three terms. So that's 12 years of leading the metro area and all the change that comes with it as well. Hancock posted a tweet late last night saying in part from the bottom of my heart, thank you for putting your trust in me and my administration to lead our city. Now, after the inauguration, the city of Denver is throwing a festival in honor of the city's vibrant culture. It's called Vibes Fest. So it's a free event. Anyone can go. That will start at 5 tonight at Union Station with live music, performances, food, and local vendors, and, of course, much more. The inauguration will start at 10 a.m. this morning. Doors will open to the public at 9.30, and if you can't make it, you can also watch it live on 9news.com or our app, 9 News Plus. Jordan, Corey. All right, Brianna, thank you. We'll check back in with you later this morning. Developing this morning, three people are recovering after someone fired shots at their car while driving down Colfax near E-470 in Aurora. This happened last night around 930. Police say their windows got smashed out and they thought someone threw a rock at first. Only one of them was shot and is expected to recover. It's not clear yet how the other two were hurt. Police say the victims thought they saw people street racing before the shooting, but they don't think the victims were involved. This is the latest of several shootings on Colorado's roads over the last few months. On Friday, two people were hurt in a shooting on I-70 near Quebec. Back on July 4th, a motorcyclist died after someone shot at him 20 times on I-70 near Colorado. And then last month, two men died in a road rage shooting on I-25 in Denver. Tomorrow, the woman accused of carrying out Colorado's biggest casino heist on record is due back in court. Sabrina Eddy is accused of stealing half a million dollars from the Monarch Casino Vault back in March. She originally told investigators she took the money because she thought her boss told her to bring it to someone else. Investigators now say Eddy took the money after threats from people who knew her late husband. Another man is in jail tied to the heist. New this morning, lawyers say they have settled lawsuits over a deadly boat crash involving the disgraced Murdoch family. Investigators say the boat hit a bridge near Hilton Head, South Carolina back in 2019. 19-year-old Mallory Beach was killed. Four other teenagers were hurt. Police say Paul Murdoch was driving the boat. He is the son of former lawyer Alex Murdoch, who's now in prison convicted of killing Paul. When Paul died, he was facing a trial for the boat crash. Now lawyers say all lawsuits related to that crash are settled and there won't be any trial going forward. The settlements come out to a total of $15 million. Most of that will go to the Beach family. Taking a live look right now at the White House, we are almost six months away from the presidential primary election. State election officials say their biggest concern this election cycle is deception. Secretaries of State just wrapped up their annual meeting. They say the spread of misinformation plus artificial intelligence is going to make it even harder to tell what's real and what's not. They other countries could use AI to spread false information. They're specifically worried about videos called deep fakes, which make it look like real people saying something they never actually said. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold says she put together a working group here to identify potential risks. One of the other big concerns is short staffing. Right now, there are a lot of talks of strikes among big companies in the U.S. Some good news, though, on that front. United Airlines and its pilot union have tentatively reached a new labor agreement worth about $10 billion. Negotiations and airport pickets had been going on for months. The deal puts them on par with pay at Delta, which approved a pay raise earlier this year. At United, the new deal would be a pay increase of up to 20 percent over four years, plus some quality of life benefits. The agreement now goes to the airline's 16,000 pilots to be approved. There are two about two weeks to go until UPS workers contract runs out and they could go on strike. Now UPS is preparing for the possible strike by training non union employees to take over deliveries. The company says this is only a temporary solution. Union workers make up about half of the company. They're asking for better pay benefits and working conditions. And then of course Hollywood writers and actors are both on strike right now. It is the first strike in nearly 40 years for actors. They say while you might think of actors as big A-list movie stars, the vast majority are background performer or extras who really aren't paid much. 99% of our members, the largest entertainment union in the world, are just working people, just trying to make a living, just trying to pay their rent, 
just trying to put food on the table and get their kids off to school. So that is an illusion. And everything that you watch, that you enjoy, that you're entertained by, are scenes filled with people that are not making the big money. SAG after President Friend Rusher, you were, you were hearing from there, says the union has an emergency fund set up for actors who need it, and they are prepared to strike for as long as they feel is necessary. The Tour de France is happening right now, and now there's a new warning for spectators to behave themselves after a fan caused a pretty big crash. This happened during the 15th stage of the race over the weekend. According to race officials, the fan was taking a selfie and didn't give the riders enough room to get by. Around two dozen bikers crashed. It was the second time in two days a spectator caused issues. In that case, a fan accidentally touched an American rider, which caused him to fall. So far, no one has withdrawn from the race, but you got to be very careful with that, Ed. Going to be hot today? I guess yes. Take a look at these temperatures that we're expecting along the front range, mostly in the 90s and low 100s, mostly sunny to partly sunny skies. Then tomorrow, maybe an isolated storm and temperatures only a few degrees cooler. We stay in the mid to upper 90s.